Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.3 RC or release candidate. iOS 17.3 RC is out to developers and soon to public beta testers and is available around the world for everyone at the same time. As long as you're on an iOS 17 supported device and you're a developer or beta tester. This should be the final version that releases to the public, but it has released early to developers and beta testers to make sure everything's fine with it. This came in at a very large 6.39 gigabytes on my 15 Pro Max, and anytime you go from a beta version to what should be the final version, it's going to reinstall the whole OS, so it's a very large install. The same is true when you're going from a public version to a beta version. And if you are a developer or beta tester and you're wondering when you should turn off the beta updates, I would wait until probably next week when it releases to the public. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, but I would probably turn that off then as we could see an RC2 sometimes if there's additional issues. Now this was also released alongside iPadOS 17.3 RC, watchOS 10.3 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 17.3 RC, macOS 14.3 RC, and updates for older devices as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21D50, and this particular build will be the build number released to the public a little bit later, as long as there's no additional issues found. Now the first thing is, there is no new modem update in this if you're coming from beta 3, but if you're installing it maybe from iOS 17.2.1, you will have a modem update, so it just depends on which version. As far as new features, well the first thing has to do with Apple Music. If we go into music and we go to our playlists and you'll see it pops up on its own, we now have collaborative playlists and emoji reactions. We'll tap continue and if we go into our playlists, then maybe go to my test playlist, you'll see I have a bunch of different songs here added from myself on different accounts or devices, and then you can react to them. So if you want to add someone, you've got this little icon in the upper right where you can add additional people so that you can share a playlist together and then also approve collaborators. So you can create the playlist as long as you created it, you can approve it yourself. And then you could stop collaborating if you want to. If you want to add a song, you can do that with add music, and then also you can react to a song. So if I want to tap on one here, we can maybe give it a thumbs up, give it a second, it will change to a thumbs up. We can do the same for maybe this song, and we'll have an emoji reaction. Just like you use an iMessage, it's the same thing here to different songs. So if there's one you really like, you can react to it. Now also we have a new feature called stolen device protection. This is something to help you keep your device safe and that's found in your settings and we go down to face ID and passcode, put in our passcode and if we scroll down, you'll see stolen device protection. Now I turned it off just so I could show you in this video, but it says this adds another layer of security when iPhone is away from familiar locations such as home and work. Face ID is required to access certain data and a delay prevents quick changes to security settings. So if we turn it on, now it's on, it's just working in the background. If we go to turn this off, it will confirm with Face ID and then actually say there's a security delay. So it will last for one hour and you'll still be able to use your iPhone, but if we tap start security delay, you'll see it all actually starts to count down. So that's something that's new, just a new feature to keep everything secure. And it works pretty well. There are still a few questions around it, but basically it allows you to change your device passcode and things, but gives you that delay to make sure that you can't just do it right away if someone gets a hold of your phone. Now, if we go to our lock screen, we actually have some new things here. If we press and hold, and then we go over and add a wallpaper. And if we scroll down a little ways, you'll see Unity. It says designed by black creatives and allies at Apple to honor black history and culture. So we have some new ones here, Unity Bloom, where we can swipe between styles, of course. We've got some different color options, multicolor, green, red, Unity. If we cancel, we've got some other ones as well. So you can see them. Of course, some of them are from before. We have these every year. And of course, they've added them now. So if you want to use one of those, they're now available. And also, there was a new press release today. So if we go back to our normal wallpaper, go to Apple's website, it says Apple unveils 2024 black unity collection supporting grantees that inspire resilience and creativity. If we scroll down, you'll also see they introduced a new Apple watch band like they do every year as well. So it says blooming flowers and vibrant colors in the new Apple watch black unity sport band and watch face represent pan Africanism and symbolize generations working together to address injustice and dismantle systemic barriers. So that's something they have on their website. I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out. 
Now the next thing they have has to do with AirPlay. AirPlay has been around for a while, of course, but if we go to our AirPlay and handoff settings, we actually now not only have AirPlay receiver, which we've had before, so we can share this to an Apple Vision Pro, but also we can now use it in hotels. So a hotel, if it supports it, allows you to stream securely directly to a TV in your room in select hotels. That's something that they've been promising with iOS 17. We haven't had yet, and it's added with iOS 17.3. Back under settings, if we go down to general and then Apple Care and Warranty, they've updated this to show us all the devices signed in with our Apple ID. Before it just showed paired devices, but now it shows everything and lets us see the status of Apple Care and Warranty. So that's been updated. And also they said they've optimized crash detection again. So if we go under emergency SOS, we have crash detection and they've updated this so that it works a little bit better with iPhone 14 and 15 models again. So maybe it's better at sensing when there's an issue for real and doesn't trigger automatically by mistake. Additionally, if we go over to our settings here and if we're using maybe spatial video, since the Apple vision pro is coming out very soon, if we go to our video settings, we have our spatial video icon here. If we tap on it, the first time you go into this, you'll typically see a splash screen. So that's something that's a little bit new and it's just got some different wording there. Also, there's some updates to the journal app options. So if we go into our settings and we scroll down to journal, you'll see on the left, we have iOS 17.2.1 and on the right, we have iOS 17.3 RC. We have some new options for face ID and then of course, notifications. You'll see the additional options here. If of course you've got a SIM card in, you'll have cellular data options and quite a few others. So they've reorganized this a little bit and then added a few additional things such as journaling suggestions. So if you want to modify this, you can do that and you just have a few more options to customize this based on notifications and more. So it's great to see them updating that. Now there is no new emoji in this update yet. Typically we see that with later versions. Maybe we'll see that with iOS 17.4. And one thing that I haven't seen Apple mention, but it seems like you can't use game center when you're in lockdown mode. So if you're using lockdown mode for security, that's under privacy and security based on information within the code. If you're using lockdown mode, you won't be able to use game center. That's just something new. That's a little bit different. Now, as far as release notes, if we go into the feedback app so far, there's nothing new. However, if we go to Apple's public facing current update website, you'll see that we do have some documentation and basically it says there's a resolved issue with store kit where they resolved an issue where APIs, which provide transaction values would unexpectedly fail when the purchase price of the transaction is is a very large number. We had this in the previous betas. They haven't updated this at all. And I would love to see them update this a little bit more. We don't have very good notes as far as what they're actually fixing. They just say bug fixes and security updates. They haven't specified what they're actually fixing with this update. So we don't really know for sure. However, one thing I noticed is it does seem the wallpaper fading or dimming bug seems to be a little bit better. So if I slide back up, it does fade maybe a little bit and desaturate slightly, but it did quite a bit before where it doesn't as much now. So it looks a little bit better. However, the notification bug is not fixed yet. So things are still jumping in and there's still no mention of any Wi-Fi fixes or cellular fixes that people were having with iOS 17.2.1. Maybe we'll get more details in the coming days about that, but so far they haven't mentioned anything whatsoever. As far as security updates, well, we should see those, but typically we won't see those until after it releases to the public. So on Apple's security website, the last thing we have is a magic keyboard firmware update 2.0.6. I expect this to be updated the day that this releases to the public. That's typically what we see. As far as performance so far, after using this for about an hour or so, everything seems nice and fast. ProMotion ramps up and down pretty quickly. And I don't really have any complaints as far as smoothness. You've seen me go throughout things such as music. If we just scroll here, loading has to do with Wi-Fi, but everything seems to be nice and fast as you would expect. I haven't seen any frame rate drops or lag or anything like that, with the exception of the keyboard. Sometimes when you go in the keyboard and type, I have seen it lag behind, even in this update. So maybe we'll see an RC2, maybe we won't. As far as overall heat, well, so far it's staying nice and cool despite installing a huge update. I really haven't had any issues. It's barely warm at all right now, and we'll test that more on the weekend along with the battery. And as far as battery life, if we go into our settings, 
We'll go back out of this, go to our battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100%. And if we take a look at the cycles here that go along with that, you can see that under general and about, if you have an iPhone 15 model, you'll see this phone has 82 cycles. Now I would expect this to drop to about 99%, but the updates don't cause it to drop. They're just recalculating everything. Now I have been using this on beta three and my battery life has not been great. Yesterday I used 75% of my battery and had three hours and 13 minutes of screen active time. However, by the time I went to bed, I had about 20% of my battery left and you'll see the days before it wasn't that great. However, on 17.2.1 it was. And when we talked about this in the weekend follow-up, many people actually said 17.3 was great overall. So we'll give this a few days, see if this improves. I did use FaceTime quite a bit yesterday, Instagram, Twitter, and more. So we'll have to see what it's like, but we'll check that on the weekend follow-up and see what it's like as far as battery performance, heat, and more. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.3 RC, typically by the time the release candidate comes out, it's safe to install. I would wait for the public beta if you're still on 17.2.1, but otherwise, if you're on beta three, definitely install it. If you're on 17.2.1, this most likely will be the final version, but we could see an RC too. As far as iOS 17.3's release date, I would expect it, well, probably next Monday. Apple's press release today about the Black Unity collection actually states that iOS 17.3 will be out next week. If we scroll down to the bottom where the fine print is, it actually says the new Unity Bloom iPhone and iPad wallpaper for the lock screen will also be available next week and requires an iPhone XS or later running iOS 17.3. So that lets us know it will be next week. It could come out Monday, which they typically do, or possibly Tuesday. But either way, I would expect it Monday or Tuesday. And of course, we have Apple Vision Pro pre-orders on the 19th in just a couple days with a final release to the public in two Fridays on February 2nd. So lots of things to look forward to. However, iOS 17.4 beta one can be expected as soon as next week, usually a day or two after the public release of iOS 17.3. Then maybe we'll get new emoji and some other things as well. And as far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take an initial look at that. Initial benchmarks are 2,919 for single core, 7,272 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, that's better than what we had previously in the previous beta. So, so far it seems to be doing pretty good. It's not super hot after even running the benchmarks and we'll have to see what it's like on the weekend as it could even improve from that. If you've found anything else though, I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.